Okay, so we are going to learn how to create a mock database on your front end. Uh, that's just for a quick development. So like normally when I build an app, I would build the back end first, but since I'm teaching, I figure front end is probably more visual and better to teach with. So we're going to learn how to build a mock database instead of a real database. And then later on, we will learn how to build a real database. Okay, so if I created mock data like this, it'll be too easy. Like I could just access it immediately. Like I would say users. Oh, uh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, so we don't want that. Uh, we wanted to create a server so that if I did want to access our user's information, I'd have to do something like this. Um, uh, so I didn't teach you this yet, but I will today. No. So this is the function that activates when the app first runs. And then you'd have to use a library that makes uh, fetch requests. So this is a built-in JavaScript library called, literally called fetch. But there are alternatives that we will use in place of it. But for now, I'll just demonstrate with this one. And then you'd pass in the URL. So in our case, it would be localhost at port 3001. Oh. And then after you fetch it, it'll return some information. And then we're going to use the modern syntax. So it'll look like this. Uh, const response equals await fetch. And then your response object would have your data and then you could do whatever you want with your response and for example I was going to show you this later but quickly glance over why not? why not okay so we have our response object but from component did mount to render there's no connection like we won't render won't know about the response object so what you could do is you could save it to your state, which is kind of like your temporary database just for your front end to know about information. So I could say over here, users is a empty array. And then I would do this dot set state from component did mount and update the users in state with our response It'll be like something like response.data.users. Well, not form data, but data. Is this like an input? What do you mean input? Wait, wait, no, never mind. Keep on. Yeah, so uh, we don't actually have response, so this is error, but it'll look something similar to this. And then what this does is it will update this users with this information. So this will go in there, and then inside of render, so we're not doing this, we'll pretend that this thing exists we would do const users equal this dot state and then it'll get the information that was here and put it inside this variable and then you would be able to render your users okay this is fun yeah so this is step one right and then so you get your response which is data and then you get step two you set state which puts your data up here. Uh, this is going to be data. Um, I'm just going to. Uh, this is more like a comment. Okay. Data from response goes here. And then over here, step four, you receive your. Receive uh, data that's in state, which is. A temporary data base for your front end. And then you finally render step five. Okay. Uh, that is how you would normally go about getting information. So if we weren't doing local development, this would be a real URL. It would be, let's say, if you were trying to access Twitter API. It would be like twitter.com slash api slash v12, I don't know what it is, but I'm making it up. And then you'd say users, something like that. So inside of our jobs array, 
For each job, what information do we care about? Title. What was that? Title. Title. Okay. Uh, Wesley, what what do you want to apply to? Apply to? Yeah. Um, let's just say software engine. Let's just say that. Okay. Okay. And what else do we care about? Imagine you're applying to software engineer jobs right now, and uh, let's just go to uh, okay. Glassdoor. Or salary. Something. Yeah, salary. Okay. Salary. Uh, this would be a number. How much do you want to get paid? Uh, let's just say. One fifty. One fifty dollars. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what else do we care about? That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> Can you put uh, oh, count? No, uh, I did that out of instinct, but no. Okay, salary and location. Yes. Oh, that's location. huge. Um, New York. Okay. Would we want to also do job description text for potential NLP? Okay. A bunch of, a bunch of stuff. Okay. So to create a JSON server, we're gonna need to install a library. Uh, it's a add-on that we could get from using Yarn. So it will be Yarn add JSON server, and we'll see it's downloading it. And you can see here in package.json, it added this line. That's how it, it knows, like, oh, we want to use this library. And it downloads some stuff, it updates this file. You don't really need to ever mess with this file. You would just come here to look at the different versions. Because then sometimes uh, maybe you want a different version or, like, an update breaks your app or something. So that's what this file is good for. Package that JSON. Again, um, is it in terminal or? Oh yeah, this is terminal. So I did yarn add JSON dash server, and also you could also look up these um, these packages before you install it to see like how to use it, what's it about. So npm JSON server. So like. This NPM website is a library of, or a collection of all the different libraries that you can install. And then you would read up about it, they like tell you how to install it, how to use it. Uh, it's very, like most of these are very well documented. So npmjs.com is very useful. And typically when you Google something, this is going to be like among the top 10 that shows up in your Google search. Um, so also, Notice how it says npm, i, i stands for install, and then the name, I did yarn add. So npm and yarn are two different ways of doing the same thing. Uh, pe some people have preference, like I have a preference with yarn because it's slightly faster. Other people like npm because it's still original. So just make sure you pick one and not have both because if you have both npm and yarn, then your app would get confused. So oh, you see this yarn lock. If you had, um, if you did npm install also, then it'll create a different file. I think it's some other lock file. And then your app would get confused, like, oh, I don't know which one to use, and then it'll throw an error. And if that ever happens, uh, just delete one of them, delete this, whole node modules folder and then uh, do either yarn install or npm install. The, so you just gotta pick one of them. Okay. But anyways, let's get into creating our mock data. So well, I'm gonna create a file, uh, call it db.json, db as in database. And then we're gonna create some fake information. So we're trying to build a 
job tracking app. app. So we need to start like thinking about some things that we would want to save to our database uh, for this app to work. So like, for example, something would be like user information um, or each individual job's attributes. Like, for example, the name of the job, the company that the job is tied to, the position, right? So like stuff like that. So we're going to need to mock that information out. And then we could use it inside of our app and we could render stuff. So. First challenge is, uh, what do you think we would expect from a user signing up? Like, what do you want to save to our database? Credentials? Credentials. Like login? Yeah, login. So we're going to use um, Google and Facebook login. That way, it's more secure and you don't have to save, like, it's, you won't so have to save Gmail. information as much. Yeah. So we could probably say email, right? Cool. So this is, let's say, our first user. Inside of our users array, we want email. Um, let's just say, Wesley, you are going to be our first user. Okay. Okay. And then. If let's say, uh, you know what? I'll make all of us users. I guess just start off with these values so we could show you, like, so I could show you that how to use it, and then we could add more mock data to it. This is kind of lengthy, but it'll be the same every time. So JSON server is just, uh, that's what this library chose to activate it. So we'll have to say JSON server. This dash dash watch is what allows it to keep running so that you don't have to rerun it. And then db.json is the name of our file. Uh, this dash dash port 301. So you know how when we opened, um, we did yarn start and opened our app. It ran on localhost 3000. Let me actually do that again. So, yarn start. So when I, when I specified the port for our fake backend, it, it could be anything as long as it's not the same port as our front end. Cause then, uh, then the computer would get confused. So we have localhost 3000 here, and then if I run this command, it'll open localhost 3001, but JSON server is not found. Let's see. Sign to debug. So I'm going to take this error and look up. I was uh, trying to start it with this, but I needed this NPX, so now it works. If you just go to your browser and type localhost colon 3000 and 1, you should see something that looks like this. Let me know if that works or not. Localhost colon 3001. Oh yeah. With Slash users? users. Yeah. yeah. So this URL. Yeah. So it's the same exact idea. Uh, it's just now you're inside of the user and going through the jobs array. Okay. And then this would come in here. So now you have access to both the user and each individual job that comes from the user.jobs array.